Buying shares is easy. It's knowing when to sell them that's the hard part. As a long-term investor, I don't tend to make a habit out of selling shares very often, but there are definitely a few sets of circumstances where I'll at least consider it. In today's video, we're gonna look at those. Let's get straight to it, shall we? Emotions are a hell of a thing. The highs of getting a job, married, a kid, or even just those times you sat alone in your car singing as loud as you can. Compare that to the downs of a breakup, a lost loved one, or being sacked. Losses cause feelings of anxiety and doubt, and the gains we make, the step forwards we take in our lives, make us feel joy. And it's the exact same with investing. Nothing triggers an emotional response like doubling your money on a company you just bought. And nothing can ruin that like waking up and seeing all the gains you just made in the last few months wiped out in a day. In a day. Instantly you think, should I sell? Should I buy more? Should I just go back to sleep? You are giving constant data to fuel those emotions. Most people don't get married all the married time. Seven times. And most people don't get sacked constantly either. These events are infrequent, they are rare. The fluctuations of your investments are constant, especially crypto. That sucker runs 24-7, 365 and swings about like a bored married couple looking to spice up their marriage a little bit. What did he say? I find the best thing to do to deal with an emotional response is to have a preset rule or question that I ask myself before I act so that my emotions don't take over. So with road rage for an example, I'm not an angry person, but in the past I was definitely known for flashing people if I felt they deserved it. You don't want to be in the way when my laser goes off. Now if someone cuts me up or forgets to indicate, rather than setting my lasers from stun to kill, I ask myself the question, Damien, have you ever forgotten to indicate or cut someone up? The answer is yes. So chill out, mate. They probably didn't do it on purpose. They definitely haven't got it in for you. Fire everything! So when I'm being blinded by the emotion-inducing barrage that is the constant information of the markets, here are some of the questions that I ask myself before I consider selling. Question one, is the valuation too high? You buy it and it shoots up in value. Are you a genius? Was it a fluke? Should I sell it now and cash in my gains? Never has it been more the case that what was once a cheap and fairly priced business can quickly become an overvalued one. It feels like now, due to the way information is shared across the world quickly, and the ease of accessing investments with discount brokers like Robinhood, 212 and Free Trade, momentum can get behind a company and push it up real quickly. They call it herd mentality. Lovely way to describe people that. But anyway, the herd takes over and they push your investment to the moon. Should we sell? In the short term, the stock market is a voting machine. In the long term, a weighing machine. Benjamin Graham. Basically, in the short term, the stock market is a popularity contest with the prettiest companies and the most popular kids winning out. In the long run, it's only really the value of those companies or the weight of them that matters. So in the long run, a company's share price tends to follow its earnings. That is the long-term value. That is the long-term measure. Now, there are exceptions to this. A lot of tech businesses earn no money and get crazy valuations. Uber is an example. But in general, if a company makes more money, the share price tends to go up with it. And if they make less money, the share price also reflects this. This is easy to understand and this is the weighing machine that Ben talks about. But security prices rise and fall much more than profits. Why is that so? Howard Marks. This is the short-term voting machine, Howard. This is all of the emotional people who can't control the road rage pushing the share prices up and down all over the place in the short term. In a study I found by Nicola Anderson and Francis Breeden, they show that since the 90s, stock prices fluctuate at six to 10 times the rate of the changes in their fundamentals. Fundamentals are just the facts about the business, how much it makes, what it owes, etc., or basically what it earns. So the price as dictated by the voting machine in the short term is swinging around six times more than the underlying fundamentals or the underlying facts that underpin that business. It looks like the herd also want to get in on the swinging action. We had about 170 people in last night. They were queuing up like they were waiting for a bus. One way to know if the herd or the voting machine in the short term is acting up is to look at something called a PE ratio. Now the PE ratio isn't the be all and end all. It can only really serve as a guide and really should act as a prompt for you to dig deeper. But it is a measure of how expensive a business is. It calculates this by comparing the price of a share in the business, the P in PE is for price, versus the earnings of the business. The E is for earnings. 
The E and PE ratio actually stands for earnings per share. So the way you work that out, you take the total earnings of the business and you divide it by how many shares there are, and then you get the earnings per share. So in a simple example, let's say there's 10 mates that each own a business and they each have one share in it. So there's 10 shares. That business makes 20 pounds. You wanna know what the earnings per share is. 20 divided by 10, so two pounds earnings per share. You then take the price of a share and you divide it by the earnings per share and you get the PE ratio. Or you could just Google the name of the business with PE ratio at the end and get the answer. Or on most investment platforms, they already have this info listed. On Trading212, it is here. The long-term average PE ratio of the top 500 businesses in America is around 15, which means people are willing to pay on average $15 for $1 of earnings from these businesses. Now this can fluctuate a lot, but in the long run, share prices tend to move back towards this average. Remember, this number serves as a guide to how expensive the business is, but there is no agreed definition on what is expensive. There is no good or bad PE ratio, but most people agree that a PE ratio below 15 signifies a relatively cheap business, and anything above 18 to 20 is probably when you'd start to look at it and go, okay, this business is getting a little bit more expensive. People are paying more here to secure the income of this business. Now, the PE ratio is far from perfect. Tech businesses, for example, have really high PE ratios, as people expect rapid growth from these businesses, so are willing to pay more now for these businesses for that future growth. But on paper, they look expensive. But this channel's aimed at beginners, and I know a lot of you are interested in figuring out how to value a business. The PE ratio is probably one of the places you should start. I think it's a really good habit to understand the PE ratio of the businesses that you're buying and their competitors, or even just businesses in a similar sector. You can then start to get an idea of what a standard PE ratio is for that sector, and you can start to see businesses within that industry or sector that may be looking expensive compared to the others, or even ones that are cheaper that might signal a good buying opportunity. I've included a couple of great articles below that explain the PE ratio in more detail, and also look at other varieties of this like forward PE. These ratios sound scary, but honestly, they are measuring simple things. Using a few different ones, you can start to build an idea of if a business you like or hold is fairly priced. One of the first things I do when I see a business that I own is shot up rapidly in prices, I try and figure out why that has happened. If that rise in price isn't linked to an increase in earnings, i.e. if the business hasn't come out and said, we're now earning a bucket load more cash than everyone thought, so that's why the share price has shot up, because remember, in the long run, share prices tend to follow the earnings of the business. So if there isn't an earnings announcement and the PE ratio is looking like the business is expensive, I will consider selling that position. Or I will at least consider selling out my initial investment to take out the money that I put in at the start back so that I'm you know, riding on a free position. I did this recently with Boohoo actually. It shot up about 40% since I've bought it. So I cashed out my initial investment. A lot of people will crucify me in the comments for selling something that's gaining, but this is all about managing your own emotions. And for me personally, I find it a lot easier to sit on an investment and watch the wild swings when I've already got my original cash out. It's like, you know, freebie. The next reason to sell is a lot easier to get our heads around. No more PE ratios and swinging. I don't expect to get any action tonight. Sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. The share price has crashed, should I sell? Whether it's one individual stock, a whole sector, or even the whole world stock market dropping at the same time, there is one question that I ask when share prices fall, and that is, has anything changed long term? And if the answer is no, I'm probably getting excited and gearing up to buy more. It's a very emotional and irrational response to be happy buying something at 10 one day, and then when it crashes to five, you're like, I don't want it anymore, sell it, sell it, sell it. In reality, if you were buying something for 10 the other day and it drops to five, you should be made up and you should be filling your boots. We know now that in the long run, share prices tend to follow a company's earnings. So if share prices crash, all we need to do is ask ourselves: has this business's ability to make money in the long run now changed? Most of the time, it's just a short-term voting machine playing havoc with the markets. Like, I woke up the other day and everything was down, it seemed. All of my investments in stocks and shares, my crypto was down, everything was down. I look at it and go, has anything changed in the last 24 hours? Nope, okay, buy more of everything. The key is, if things have changed forever, then you should consider selling. If smoking gets banned, investing in tobacco businesses wouldn't be wise. An example that may help you understand this better is Warren Buffett's decision to sell out of all the airline positions that he had as a result of the illness that we all currently find ourselves in. 
basically, he woke up one day and thought, travel is now changed forever. I don't think it's going to go back to the way it was for a while as a result of this illness. And basically, I don't want any part of that industry anymore because I think that the game has changed. He sold out, I think it was about $4 billion worth of airline stock. So massive position that he had there. And he cancelled it on that basis. He locked in a loss because he thought the rules have changed. Compare that to, do you remember the... Iceland volcano in about 2010, 2011, it spewed an ash cloud into the air that meant that no planes could fly. What that did to airline sh stocks, share prices in the short term was they tanked. But anyone looking at that now with hindsight knows that that ash cloud wasn't gonna stay forever. That was a short term impact, but the effects on shares were massive. In those two examples, both airlines, one was a buying opportunity because it was short term. The ash cloud was never going to last forever. Planes were going to get off the ground. The other one made the best investor in the world exit his positions because he was so worried that the fundamentals of that business had changed. So you can see in those two sets of circumstances how one is a short term influence. One is potentially long term. Now, Warren could be wrong and airlines could pick back up and I'm sure they will. But, you know, it's been 12 months and he might have assessed that it, he wasn't hanging around that, that long. It all comes back to the voting and weighing machine. Is the drop caused by popularity decreasing short term? Ash cloud in the sky, no planes can fly. Or is the drop due to the fundamental change in the future of the company? Like all holidays being cancelled indefinitely. If a decrease in share price is more due to a short term impact or popularity, then I'm more likely to buy more than I am sell that share. I'm not saying you should do that, but before you act, ask yourself the question, is this going to change the game? Is this going to stop this business making money in the same way going forwards? Or is this just a bit of news for today, an ash cloud in the sky? The other reasons for me when I think it's acceptable to sell a share include the fact that I need the cash or that I have something better to invest in. You've got to be honest with yourself though about needing the cash. I need that cash when it comes to living off it to retire. Spending £5,000 on Britney Spears' pregnancy test does not constitute a need. And when it comes to finding a better investment, just be careful you're not jumping around too much. This chart from a study shows a clear correlation between portfolio turnover, i.e. how frequently you buy and sell stocks, and your investment returns. Investors who traded the most saw the lowest returns. So don't get caught up in the newest fad and sell your current investments to chase the newest hot stock. I like to let things ride. Really, this all comes back to this great analogy for me that Warren Buffett used to describe investing. You could own a farm as a business for years. And all you would really worry about is the performance of the farm long term. Will the crops grow? Will it rain enough this year? But imagine your next door neighbour is also a farmer. And each day he stands outside your house and shouts the prices he will buy your farm for and what he will sell his for. But this farmer is mental and the price he shouts out every day fluctuate loads, just like the stock market. If you were smart, on the days he shouted out a low price, you would buy his farm. And on the days he shouted out a really high price, you may consider selling. This should be the same with the stock market. You should take advantage of the crazy farmer's price swings of the popularity voting machine getting it wrong. Not become tied up in the emotional ride and believe in what that mental farmer is saying to you. Because if your intention is to hold on to the farm because you believe it will do well in years to come, the crazy man and his weird habit only serve as a distraction. And in reality, most of us should just go back to caring about the long-term performance of the farm and not what the mental bloke next door thinks about the price today. Imagine if an estate agent came to your house every day and told you the value of your house. Would that constant flow of information affect how you feel about your home? 100% it would. But that doesn't happen, so we just sit back, happy as Larry, not knowing the fluctuations in the valuations of our homes. Should you sell, that's up to you. Just try not to come to that decision based on emotion. We can all feel blinded by the short-term fluctuations when they come at us quickly and we don't expect them. Like driving down a country lane and someone is coming at you with their main beam on. It's hard to see past and you're unsure how to react, but all you need to do is slow down and take stock of the situation before you make your move. And maybe give them a little heads up with a cheeky flashback. You don't want to be in the way when my laser goes.